Welcome back to a very rainy day here in Alabama. We made it all the way from Virginia to Alabama in the span of two months, so we're making pretty good progress. And the smart car is uh, still ticking, no issues. Uh, and after the catastrophic failure of Ben's Honda Beat engine yesterday, Ben, you've got a new car. But you're so imaginative. Why do you not look surprised? I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. When most people see a Honda Beat or a Smart 4.2, the first thing they ask is, wasn't your car silver? Or don't you have any self-esteem? The first question we ask is, can we take these on a road trip? So we got Matt here, keep going. We're driving our little teacup cars from our home state in Virginia all the way to Texas, where everything is bigger. Or at least, yep, I think there's an electrical issue somewhere. We're gonna try. We're a little bit further than halfway through the trip, so I figure one more beat, how many beats does it take to finish this trip? Uh, 1.5 beats. So yeah, we're doing beat addition at this point. Yes. So tell me about this beat. Is there anything even to know? Uh, well, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, this beat is a little bit more beat. More little, beat. A little rusty and very stock with no options. Options that this beat does not have include armrest, don't have that. Airbag, don't have that. Rear spoiler, don't have that. It's on stock suspension, so no coilovers, obviously no TEs. Stock exhaust, this little tiny thing, it's quiet. Uh, stock intake, uh, and the soft top also leaks. It was uh, one of the more affordable beats that I could find. Actually, it was the only beat that I could find yeah. here in Alabama, <laughs> but it's not a smart car. It's not a smart car, no. I don't know if it's a smart buy either, because uh, this chassis is pretty rusty. Yeah, the first indicator that was a red flag to me was the fact that it's on snow tires. Uh, that tells me that it came from a northern region of Japan. Okay, so the biggest concern this carpet's actually nicer. Yeah, than it looks good. One. Uh, the other one had like a couple holes here. This one I doesn't. Mean, there's some rust here, but honestly, it looks fine. I mean, uh, yeah, a little bit. Like, oh um, my, yeah. It, it's just a little bit more room in the trunk. No, I'm set, dude. Thanks. Okay. I ate already. Well, the biggest concern is the motor. Um, yeah, it's running healthy, but with Honda Beats, the service interval for the timing belt. 50,000 kilometers, which is what, 32,000 miles? Not very many miles. Ask me when this timing belt was changed, I don't know. So it's a game of roulette. I, do you know Japanese? Because there is um, service stickers on this How door. How did you know I knew Japanese? Yeah, there's service stickers on this door. Whatever whatever this item is, yeah. do you know what that is? Uh, oh, ohayou gozaimasu, uh, arigato. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, I don't think it says that. That would well, be kind of weird. Hentai, hentai. No, I don't think it says that either. <laughs> this car does have... Yeah? <laughs> Can she tell you how long you until your timing yeah, belt Yeah, that's snaps? actually telling you how your timing belt <laughs> your interval. Your timing belt will snap yeah. in 30 miles. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You bought not the greatest example of beat. Somehow a worse example of beat than your last beat. It was cheaper. Had some issues. Saved some money. Did you not think about any other K cars? There's no other K cars in Alabama. Um, we'd have had to backtrack a lot more. You could have gotten yourself a cappuccino. You could have gotten an AutoZam. You could have gotten a no. Honda Acti. No, none of those are in Alabama. Really? Yeah. South doesn't like. Apparently not. The little guys, huh? Ben, why did we do this trip? Well, I don't think we thought it was going to be nearly as uh, costly as it's been. Yep, least profitable trip. Oh yeah. We're definitely heading in the right direction with this company. You know what's crazy? Two 1991 Honda Beats can be the exact same car, and yet they're so different. My previous Beat was very much a tuner car. This Beat is like your grandmother's Miata. It's bone stock, nothing's been touched, but also it hasn't been cared for in the same way that like an enthusiast car is cared for. The door panels are super faded, the radio is kind of falling out, uh, the soft top leaks a little bit in the rain. I don't know who owned this car in Japan, but uh, I mean, 
Changing the wiper blades is usually a good thing to stay on top of. But this beat to wiper blades are very bad. I'm gonna throw some new ones on, and I also need to get some anti-fog. All of the windshield is fogging. I'm grabbing a rear wiper. I don't have a rear right turn signal or brake light. I think this is it. These are what you call overkill. Luke is insisting that I get this chemical guy's squash scent. I assume it's based off of the JDM squash uh, air freshener that you'll get. I don't know, I guess I guess it's a Japanese thing. I don't know what the, I don't know why they want their cars to smell like vegetables. Advances everything I need. European is showing. I think there's an electrical issue somewhere because your right blinker also engages your left blinker, but not not fully. Just like the left blinker is faint. What? Yeah, it, it looks like you just put your hazards on. That car is a Mercedes, isn't it? Yeah, it is a Mercedes. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So this car doesn't have literally any options on it. It is the complete bare bones Honda Beat. Then I was looking for somewhere to plug in my phone charger and uh, I just noticed that my car doesn't have the cigarette lighter option. You, you have no cigarette lighter? No, there's an empty plate where the cigarette lighter is supposed to be. Hey Ben, it's, uh, it's not like raining super heavy or anything, but uh, these tires are very sketch. Like every time we hit a puddle, the car just wants to slide. Uh, would you mind if we swung by my other beat and I could trade wheels? We didn't video this, but Ben uh, bought a compression tester in advance also that we're going to use to find out which cylinder is the one that decided to give up the ghost on his little beat. All right, everything is still in one piece. There's yeah, no holes. I don't see anything exploding. No rods. He's chilling anywhere. Well, that might, that might be the problem cylinder. <laughs> It could be all three. It could be all three. <laughs> that is a very wet spark plug. All right, we're being, reading a big zero right now, Ben. Let's see if we can improve on I that. I don't know if it's going to change. Yeah. Okay, okay. 150. 150? One, it's rock solid, big Okay, dog. all right. Yeah. All I don't right. know what all that oil is about, but you got compression. Welcome to uh, Gears and Gasoline Garage, located out here in a parking spot in, uh, in Alabama. York, Alabama. York, Alabama. Good old York, Alabama. Are yeah. you from York, Alabama? You from York? Come on you down. From York? You got a K car, you from York? Okay. Head on down to Marathon Gas Station and we'll fix you right up. All right, Ben. Yeah. Cylinder two. Yeah, that one actually looks a little wetter on the diode, I think. The diode does appear to be drenched. This one's actually better. It's like 170. Wow. Two for three. What cylinder? if the motor was just choking on oil? I think that it's... Maybe it's okay. It might be okay. It was not okay. Mm-hmm. It's that one. Are you holding the button down? Are you no, holding the button? I'm not. <laughs> okay. Well, that stinks. And while we're here, I'm just yeah. gonna go ahead and take my rain tires. Oh, yeah, and your T37. Well, yeah, I mean, it just it just happens to be mounted on them already. Oh. The pinch mount has rusted off. <laughs> it's a good car. <laughs> yeah. That one is.
Well, it's been a really good beat. It's been the best beat. It served us well. So long. We're gonna see a lot more of the country than we normally do. And this is an area of the country that we haven't really explored a lot to begin with, but it's really nice seeing it from the avoid highways perspective. Uh, we're driving through towns that we never would have even known existed uh, if we had just stayed on the interstate. We're seeing cool areas, you know? We're really getting a different side of the American South. It is a very American thing Gosh. to drive by a local park and they just have a full-size tank. Usually road trips are pretty stressful being on the highway and trying to figure out your next exit and where your fuel stop is gonna be, but you know, when you're on these back roads, it's chill. It's not always pretty, but it's authentic. And I think that's really what Gears and Gasoline road trips are all about, authenticity. Ben, I know it's been a rough couple of days for you, new car and everything. Rough couple of days for both of us, but right side, I was just looking at the schedule and I was reminded, next stop is New Orleans and Mardi Gras, okay? So all this, uh, all this garbage you've been putting up with is about to get paid off because we are gonna have a blast. Yeah, all right, I mean, that's cool. I like new experiences. I've never done Mardi Gras. It's gonna be partying. It's gonna be people in the streets, live music. There's gonna be parades. There are gonna be floats. French Quarter, Bourbon Street. Beaded necklaces, uh, give those to women. It's gonna be a blast. The next day when we arrived in New Orleans, we were greeted by the eccentricities of the French Quarter. But although the attire seemed out of place, our cars felt right at home. Finally, we'd found a setting where our little tic-tac-sized vehicles were just the right size. Obviously because it's Mardi Gras, parking here is a little bit more expensive. Sure. Event parking. Yeah. Um, it's $30 a spot, but. 30? Yes. For like one hour? For the best time of your life. Do you think it's buy two for one if we're parking one spot? I, yep. well, I mean, it's buy space. Yep. 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 One more. Ben, these parking spaces are too big. I mean, we still have all this room for activities. We, yeah, we, we, can have, have, we can park a couple of mopeds here. Just, you know, do whatever you want in all this space here. <laughs> have a prison what workout. is it? What is this? What? Oh. <laughs> Oh, you didn't know, I, this must be a different model, Ben. It must be the Honda T. What, what is this? <laughs> well, Ben, don't know, I worked hard on this. This is from Vance Auto, I bought it just for you. With our pair of pocket cars parked, we shelled out $30 for the space, and it was finally time to indulge ourselves in some Mardi Gras revelry. Maybe the party's just getting started. Uh, there should be live music, beads, I don't There's understand. A couple drinks flowing over there. Yeah, but this is way too tame for Mardi Gras. I mean, this should be the party of a lifetime. When is Mardi Gras? Uh, this year it's February 21st. I checked, I double checked, I scheduled it perfectly. And it's, that was two months ago and it's Easter now. Shoot. I did not account for the fact that we had three cars break down. I guess we are a little bit behind schedule. Yeah, I, dude, I even bought you these glasses. Like it's, it's perfect. Aw, thanks man. You still gonna wear them though, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's the thought that counts and I guess we're still here. That sucks. <sighs> okay, well. I mean, there's a couple drinks over there. There's a couple people doing stuff. Yeah, it is 11 a.m. We've been to all the states, but we've barely spent any time in Louisiana at all. Right, I mean, we've only ever driven through. We just it's just like in passing. You see it at 75 miles an hour or whatever. This is crazy though. The old French Quarter, like all these houses and buildings yeah. are so old. Yeah, this, this like downtown section seems to be more focused on people than cars, and it's actually like pulling it off a little bit. I, uh, I did have some backup plans. Hope you brought your sweet tooth. Okay. Because uh, you got some delicious, delicious French pastries. Okay, that's good. This try. one right here is my sweet tooth. Okay, so. perfect. I've well, got that one. It's still intact, yeah. so. Ben, we are running a little bit late uh, today, yeah. by about two months. Yep. Um, but it's okay, I think I can get us right back on track. Uh, we're gonna do a quick speed run of the, the sights and sounds of New Orleans. Uh, first, we're here at Cafe Dumont. So what is this? Uh, this is a beignet. What is it? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> it's, it's just powdered it's sugar. It's dough and powdered sugar. Yup, it's a donut in a different shape. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really good. It's like a big funnel cake. And then we've got Cafe Ole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Extremely good. Cool. Get one. I don't know which one fits the best. Let me call my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you look great. How are you? <laughs> You're glowing. Happy Easter. You, you too. Fun historical fact, man. Yeah? When Thomas Jefferson negotiated the Louisiana Purchase, right, he actually paid the French in beads, which is where those beads come from. You know what? Something feels off about this story. Mm. He gave them a bunch of beads. Right, you're getting confectioner sugar on my painting here. And then it turned into kind of a girls gone wild situation. The French, I mean, you know how they are. Although it wasn't Mardi Gras, Ben and I still used what time we had to experience some of the sights and sounds of New Orleans. I don't think it drives. It's, it is a five speed. Huh. Tires yeah. are a little dry rotted. It definitely hasn't moved in a while. If you thought the beignets were good, it's lunchtime, baby. We're gonna have another very savory Louisiana special. This one's gonna blow your socks off. It's not seafood, is it? It can be seafood, but it doesn't have to be. I know you don't eat seafood. No, I don't eat seafood. Even though you're in the seaweed car. Mm. What? You see how rusty it is? That thing's been oh, underwater. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So Ben, what is this? So that is... Just jambalaya. Jambalaya is a very Cajun Creole dish, which is basically spicy rice and meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks nice though, it looks very yeah. uh, full of flavor. Mmm, mmm, ooh, mmm. Yeah, people on the internet love watching people eat. They do, and they, you know what they like even better than that? Listening to people talk while they eat. Mm due to the fact that we're extremely behind. This, mm -hmm. this thus concludes the speed run. The speed run? The speed run of New Orleans. Mm. New Orleans at a glance. Mm -hmm. I really got to see where the beat shines, and that is city driving. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Yeah, throughout the trip, we, we kind of started off thinking, oh, 70 mile per hour, this car can do it, no problem. Then, well, that's 7,000 RPM, so maybe let's bring it to six. Mm -hmm. 60 is too high, 50. 50 still kind of too high. 10. 10. made it. It's land of the free. I love coming to Advance. Luckily they got them here in Texas. Hopefully this is the last one we have to come to for a while. 
the check engine light has begun to uh, burst its colors on the really? smart card. Yes. Oh. You happen to be able to read OBD2 codes? I don't. Don't get burned on the candle. <laughs> I don't think I have an OBD2. What year is yours? OBD1, uh, 91. Oh, yeah. One code repeated. EVAP emission system leak detected. Ah, it's fine. It's an EVAP. Yeah, my previous beat had an EVAP issue before it blew up, too. Uh, yeah. I keep seeing a little light come on that looks like a giant screw going into the side of my car, which I think is a gas cap. gas cap thing. Yeah, it's telling you to tighten the gas cap. Okay. Or it could be a giant amount of blow-by pushing through your PCV system. Uh, causing crankcase ventilation to get where it's not supposed to be. Th my, and then your not, ring is gonna fail. Fired up, pull the oil cap off. If it blows your hand off of it, it's bad. Yeah, yeah there you go, see? Yeah, I wouldn't know about, <laughs> that. about that. I would have yeah. no clue. And then this was a replacement that I got that doesn't work. No, because this is a single filament. Yeah. Not a dual. So either one of these will work. Okay. The only difference is gonna be, these will be brighter. Oh, 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 oh. Let me hit those guys. I don't want the brighter. Let me just get these guys. I have to drive behind you. Uh, I've got to be visible. It's a tiny car. <laughs> Second time's a charm. Changing this bulb out. This should be the one it needs. Now let's do the other side because I went with some brighter bulbs. I don't think it's the gas cap. There's some other EVAP issue. So the gas cap I've been tightening, but. Kind of smelled gas the whole time I've had the car. We can fix this. Yeah, your bill, bud. My bill? Yeah, squish that bill for me a little bit. There you go. Keep going. Keep going with it. There you go. Yes, brother. You gonna leave a rubber band on it overnight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a little better, yeah. You're very 90s now. I am very 90s, yeah. It's hello, fellow kids. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Don't do drugs. <laughs> All right. We're going on a road trip. Left, yep, right, wow, would you look at that? Well, shoot, I guess that was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben, I think you would agree that a key component of a K car, you gotta have a cute horn. These cars That's are fair. cute, they gotta have a horn that matches. That's fair. The cappuccino horn wasn't very cute. The cappuccino horn was too rugged. Yeah. It was too all American. Is the smart car a K car in sound as well? We gotta find out. So we got Matt here. He works at Advance. He's gonna help be our judge. He's impartial, obviously. He doesn't care about the beat or the smart car, I'm sure. Nah, there you go. <clears throat> the real K car. Okay. G give him a little, give him a couple. All right. Now we've got the American version. Bicycle horn. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna have to give it to the Honda. Yeah! The, ah. the true K car. Come on, it sounds like a little clown car. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you that one. It sounds like a clown car, kind of looks like a clown car. Yeah. <laughs> Bicycles aren't as cute as small cars. Fine, fair. <laughs> All right. Round one went to the Honda Beat, and we were back on our way to Houston, where we could finally end the trip. Another thing that when we're looking at K cars, we need to obviously be very cognizant of, they're city cars, okay? And in a city, what do you need? You need a good turning radius, Ben. Because let's say that you're in a dead end. Obviously, you're not gonna make a multi-point turn if you don't have to. But if you swing it too wide, you're gonna hit a very expensive Mercedes with a Texas license plate, so the owner will probably shoot you. I mean, this is a city car, Ben. <laughs> yeah, it's a, you wanna it give is, it a shot? It is a city car. Let's see if the B can do it. Honestly, it's a generous space. I think I think the the bee should have no problem. Now, what if in this hypothetical scenario, Ben, there was a a young pedestrian standing in the street just next to the curb, so you couldn't get as close as the curb? Okay. Let's find out. We could just measure 
the radius. No, no, we need a young pedestrian. Okay. Devante. Where are you going to find one of those? Devante. Ben cast our camera car operator, Devante, as an irritable Houston pedestrian. Uh, excuse, excuse me, can I, can I get you to just, just step just right over there for me? Get out of here. <laughs> well, my apologies, I guess I'll just have to, just have to try from here. Are you sure I can't convince you to just... Get out of here. All right. Mercedes versus Mercedes. You've got like three feet. <laughs> You're oh, clear. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's about a foot gap, actually. I can do that. What is this? There's a pedestrian in my way. You two, get out of here. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, Keep you're, going. You're gonna tell me, yeah? Yeah, I'll tell you, bud. Keep going. Keep Seriously? Go yeah, keep going. Buddy. <laughs> oh, goodness. I got my blood pumping. Gears and gasoline can't afford a Mercedes. I will say, both cars, amazing turning radius. Very, radius. very good turning <laughs> radius. It's so different going from an Evo and an STI yeah, no, to these. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll concede. I think you've got me by two or three inches. Yeah, just, I'll give you the two or three inches. Well, howdy there, partner. How about we get this show on the road? Ready? Why do I have to do this? Uh, okay. That mailbox down there, that's the finish line. All right. Give it to you. Okay, how are we counting it off? Three, two, one. have no right to be this slow. <laughs> and that shift had no right to be that slow. I, thought, I was like, oh crap, here it goes. And then, oh, you got a shift. My turn. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it is kind of strange that this many cars blew up on this trip. I mean, yes, K cars are not meant to do this, but also eh, they shouldn't be this brittle. I think we just ran into some pretty bad luck. I think the cappuccino sucking in the intake filter, it's kind of bad luck. My other beat, I think was weak from the get-go. It was a pretty high mileage beat. It had a lot of blow-by before we even left for the trip. I can't explain the Subaru Vivio Bistro Sports other than the fact that it's a Subaru. This Honda seems to be running perfectly fine and we've been running it, you know, at 6,000 RPM and it's not skipping a beat. It's honestly <laughs> not skipping a beat. Well, when it comes to being a K car, the smart, the engine's a little bit too big. But other than that, the gas mileage it gets is right on par. The dimensions are just about there. The turning radius, exactly what you'd be looking for in a tiny little practical car. It's nice and spacious on the inside and it'll do freeway speeds pretty much without issue. As far as which car does K car things better in the US, undisputably, it's got to be the Smart. Would I buy the Smart? No. No, if you're shopping for a K car, just get a K car. Don't buy the Smart. If you need a car that'll do freeways, just get a Prius. So are K cars the efficient, space conscious solution to America's problem? No. No. Definitely not. They're not, unfortunately. No. In a city, like for example, when we went to New Orleans or here in Houston, they're great. Perfect, yeah. The, the perfect car if you're just putting around at 
Yeah, if I lived in a city, I would I would absolutely own a K car, yeah. like over anything else. It yeah. makes so much sense. You can park it everywhere. You can get in and out. Yeah, extremely fuel efficient. Like, yeah, you know, probably 45 miles to the gallon in, in city. Yeah, uh, but as soon as you have to hop on onto our glorious interstate system, one probably the eighth marvel of the world. Definitely, you're screwed. Uh, it's a nightmare, and that's only if your car survives. But if you want to do a K car road trip for yourself. Make sure that you have saved up lots of money in your bank account to purchase more K cars along the journey. Ben, how much did you spend? Let's see, I spent 11.5 on the cappuccino, mm -hmm. right? Then I had to spend another $7,700 on the Subaru. Oh, we gotta crack out the calculator for that. Yeah. 11.5 plus 77, mm -hmm. okay. And then I had to spend 43.80 on, uh, <clears throat> on the smart car. That's yeah, the smart cheap. car was a killer deal, yeah. Okay. $23,580. Oh my God. Um, I purchased my beat for $8,400. Okay. And my other beat was $6,900. $15,300. Can we combine those two now? $15,000 plus $23,500? A total of $38,800 in K cars and a smart. That's how much like a really nice AutoZam AZ1 cost. We're flying home. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for watching. I'm going to ship the car back because it'll blow up if we try to drive it back. <laughs>
Bistro Sports, yeah. We didn't speak English. We, were, we all lived in a, this was an upgrade for us. We lived in a, a dishwasher box. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was an upgrade. Me and my, we grew up so poor. My dad was a part-time stamp collector. He tried his hardest. Sorry, I'm getting teared up right now. My mom, she used to work super hard. She was a Grand Canyon tour guide. <laughs> she fell out of the helicopter. We, we miss her dearly. But my daddy done passed on the, super, the Subaru Vivo Bistro Sports to me. It looks just like the one I grew up in. God. None of this, we're gonna have so many bloopers yeah. and nothing for the yeah. video. Yep. <laughs> this is good. Okay. Everyone can mute their phones. Okay. After calmly discussing our options, Ben and I mutually decided it would be best to take the freeway. And before we knew it, we were finally out of Georgia. Can you like, like, that's good, that's great. You're right in the zone, but bring it down just a little bit. Volume down? Like the intensity. Oh, right? like more calm. A little bit more Mr. Rogers okay. on it. After calmly discussing our options, Ben and I mutually decided it would be best to take the freeway. And before we knew it, we were finally out of Georgia. Okay, so slow it down for me a little bit. Take your time with it. Just kind of draw it out in yeah. more length. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, you're, you're okay. not in a rush. Okay, we're, we're calm. Okay. We're calm here. And then give me some intonation, some ups and downs after calmly discussing our options. Okay. Right. After calmly discussing our options, Ben and I mutually decided it would be best to take the freeway. And before we knew it, we were finally out of Georgia. Oh, money in the That's bank. That's the one. That's it. Okay. Going right in. Take that last one there. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put the whole thing in. I think, honestly, they're all so good. We can just leave the whole thing in there, to be honest. 